Ever wondered about the voices that once filled the airwaves, but seem to have vanished into thin air? Well, hold on to your hats, because we're about to dive into a forgotten treasure trove of R&B singers you are bound to be nostalgic about. These are the talents that the music industry tried to sweep under the rug, but we're not letting them fade away that easily. First up, we have Sharissa, whose soulful tunes captivated audiences but somehow slipped through the cracks. Then there's Sunshine Anderson, whose name once shone bright but dimmed too soon for many fans' liking. And who could forget Blue Cantrell, whose voice once painted the airwaves blue with emotion. But wait, there's more. Let's not overlook Amanda Perez, whose melodies tugged at heartstrings before fading into obscurity. And last but not least, Truth Hurts, whose powerful vocals left an indelible mark on R&B, even if the industry tried to erase her from memory. So grab a seat, turn up the volume, and join us as we shine a light on these forgotten gems of R&B. Because in this we're making sure they get the recognition they deserve. First up is Sharissa. I would have been home alone in my bed. Sharissa Dawes was born in New York City's bustling borough of Brooklyn in 1975. She's a woman who knows a thing or two about life's twists and turns. Growing up as the oldest sibling in the Bronx's Edenwald projects, Sharissa's journey from local talent to musical sensation is one worth hearing. Music was Sharissa's first love, discovered at the tender age of seven. In a neighborhood where expectations weighed heavy on young shoulders, she found solace in the rhythms and melodies that surrounded her. Despite the challenges and pressures to fit into certain molds, Sharissa fought against the odds, determined to chase her dreams. By the time she hit her teenage years, Sharissa was already making waves in the local music scene. Whether she was performing with kids from her neighborhood or singing her heart out in the school cafeteria, her talent shone bright. Influenced by her mother's diverse music collection and fueled by televised music specials, she honed her craft and found her unique voice. Joining groups like Triple Doze and later becoming part of the Urban Vocal Quartet forecast, Sharissa's star began its ascent. Their debut album, Any Weather, introduced the world to her soulful vocals, earning her legions of fans. Hits like Miss My Lovin' and I Tried solidified her status as a rising star. But it was her solo career that truly set her apart. Discovered by Jimmy Henchman in 2002, Sharissa's debut album, No Half Steppin', showcased her gritty, hip-hop-influenced R&B sound. Songs like Any Other Night and I Can't Wait climbed the chart, making her a household name. Sharissa's journey didn't stop there. Collaborating with industry heavyweights like Wyclef Jean and R. Kelly, she continued to push boundaries and explore her creativity. Her second album, Every Beat of My Heart, was a testament to her growth as an artist and received praise from critics and fans alike. But life has its twists and turns, even for the brightest stars. Despite her success, Sharissa made the difficult decision to step away from the industry. It wasn't an easy choice, but sometimes, the path to self-discovery requires use to take a different road. And here is why, during an interview, she drew a lot of comparisons to Mary J. Blige when she came out. That could be a gift and a curse in the music world. Was it more of a curse than a gift for her? She responded, The way that I wore my hair, the way that I dressed, that's how I lived. That was just me. That's how I went to the studio, because that was just me. I did get the comparison, and I love Mary. That's what I came up listening to. I think it was kind of hard because I think people judged me on those similarities. They judged me off of that because the people that loved her would hate me. I don't see a reason. I don't know why we all can't just do our music and be okay. Mary has great records. I don't feel like I ever had great records. I was just expressing myself. Mary is on a pinnacle. Nobody can ever reach that. They did make it hard for me doing that. Every now and then I would hear little things like when they see my old videos. Oh, she looks like Mary. I just kind of felt discouraged by it, but it's all good. I'm a Mary fan, and Mary has always showed me love, but the fans don't get to see that. She also stated in another interview that another reason she stepped away from the industry was that she didn't want to sell her soul. If I didn't stop, you know, I would have been out there selling my soul. Like, you know oh, what I mean? Wow, wow. It wasn't worth it to me. I just Today, Sharissa Dawes remains an inspiration to many. Her journey from the Bronx projects 
to music stardom is a testament to the power of resilience and determination. Though her voice may not dominate the airwaves as it once did, her impact continues to resonate with those who dare to dream. So the next time you hear Sharissa's soulful voice on the radio, take a moment to remember the girl who defied the odds and chased her dream. For Sharissa Dawes, the journey may have taken unexpected turns, but the legacy of her strength and talent lives on. Next up is Blue Cantrell. Blue Cantrell, once a rising star in the music industry, seemed to vanish from the spotlight, leaving fans wondering what happened to the talented singer. Let's take a closer look at her journey and the reasons behind her sudden disappearance. Blue's rise to fame began when she caught the attention of music executives in Atlanta, leading to a record deal with Arista Record. With hits like Hit 'em Up Style and Breathe, she quickly became a household name in the early 2000s. However, behind the glitz and glamour, Blue faced challenges and controversies that ultimately led to her stepping away from the industry. One of the biggest rumors surrounding Blue was her alleged feud with Beyonce. Speculation arose due to Blue's close friendship with Jay-Z and similarities between their music videos. Despite Blue denying any feud, rumors persisted, adding to the pressure she faced in the competitive music industry. Did you Jay-Z? Oh my God! I heard he's hung like a horse. <laughs> oh my God! Did she really have him locked down? I have a big crush on him now. I'll tell you that much. However, the real turning point came when Blue realized she hadn't been adequately supported by her record label. After leaving her contract, she discovered she hadn't earned as much as she should have. In hindsight, Blue admitted she should have been more educated about the music business before signing her deal, emphasizing the importance of having legal representation. Following her departure from the music scene, Blue took time for herself, spending time overseas and living in London. She acknowledged the toll that the industry took on her, describing the relentless demands of being an artist. Despite teasing a third album, it never materialized, leaving fans disappointed. While Blue's absence from the music scene was largely her own choice, some fans speculate that Beyoncé played a role in her disappearance. However, there is no concrete evidence to support these claims, and Blue herself has not directly implicated Beyoncé in her decision to step away from the industry. Blue Cantrell's story serves as a cautionary tale about the harsh realities of the music business. Despite her undeniable talent and early success, she faced challenges and setbacks that ultimately led her to reevaluate her priorities and take a step back from the limelight. Her experience highlights the importance of empowerment and education for artists navigating the industry's complexities. As for Blue's future, only time will tell if she decides to make a comeback. But for now, her story serves as a reminder that success in the music industry comes with its own set of challenges and sacrifices. And sometimes, stepping away is the bravest choice of all. Then we have Amanda Perez. Oh, oh, but it wasn't good enough for you. Amanda Jane. Perez, a talented American R&B singer, has a story that's as inspiring as her music. Born on May 24, 1980, She's not just a singer, but also a proud mom and a fighter who's conquered challenges to pursue her dreams. Growing up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Amanda faced tough time. Raised in the Waynedale neighborhood, she attended Northside High School. Life wasn't easy for her family, so as a teenager, she took up selling to help out. But amidst the struggles, she found strength in boxing, even sparring with boys which shaped her tough street image. Her journey into the music industry began when she was discovered in Fort Wayne by a talent scout. In 2001, she signed with powerhouse Silverstone Records, launching her debut album, Where You At, in 2002. Songs like Never and Angel showcased her incredible talent. With Angel becoming a massive hit, climbing the charts and winning hearts across the nation. Thanks to the guidance of Mighty Mike Quinn and the production of Tony Palacios, Amanda's music videos aired on top channels like MTV, VH1, and BET, propelling her into the spotlight. Despite challenges, she persevered, charting on Total Request Live and achieving moderate success even after parting ways with her original producers in 2005. 
Life threw another curveball when her mom got sick with cancer. She stopped her music career to be with her mom, who doctors said would only live for three months. But amazingly, her mom ended up living for three more years. Amanda had big plans to release her new album with a famous company called Virgin Records, but she had to leave because of some legal problems. In 2007, Amanda finally released her fourth album, The Hand of Fate, which she made in memory of her mom. One of her songs, Candy Kisses, became popular on the radio. It was a really difficult time for Amanda, but she didn't give up. She took a break for six years before releasing her next album, Unexpected, in 2013. This time, she started her own label, Crazy A. Amanda surprised everyone when she came back with a new style. She had a hit song called Freak for the Weekend and the music video showed her in a completely different way than before. People were shocked when she started talking openly about being in love with another woman and changed her look to be more masculine. In an interview, she said she's always known she's gay and she's just being herself. She even cut off her signature braids and gave her hair to help others. Amanda's story is all about facing tough time, following your heart, and staying true to who you are. She's not just a singer, she's a fighter. She's breaking down barriers and showing others that it's okay to be yourself, no matter what. Sunshine Anderson. Yes, I do. Meet Sunshine Jocelyn. Sian Anderson, the soulful songstress whose melodies have captured the hearts of many. Born on June 7, 1974, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Sunshine later found her groove in Charlotte. But her journey to stardom wasn't a straight road. It had its twists and turns, just like her soulful tunes. Sunshine's story took a twist when Wallace Sellers, a friend of music producer Mike City, stumbled upon her singing one day at North Carolina Central University. It was a chance encounter that changed her life forever. Soon, she found herself under the wing of none other than Macy Gray during the making of her debut album. Imagine that going from singing in university corridors to working with music industry giants. In 1999, Sunshine signed with Atlantic Records, paving the way for her first album, Your Woman, which hit the shelves in April 2001. The album climbed its way to number eight on Billboard's Hot 200 chart and settled at a cozy number two spot on the top R&B chart. Her single, Heard It All Before, became a sensation reaching number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 and soaring to number 3 on the R&B chart. With her golden voice, Sunshine earned herself a gold-certified album in no time. But her journey was far from over. In 2004, Sunshine embarked on a new adventure, signing with Matthew Knowles' Music World Entertainment. This marked the beginning of a new chapter in her career. In 2007, she released her second album, Sunshine at Midnight. Though it debuted at number 86 on the Billboard 200, it shone brightly at number 16 on the R&B chart. Sunshine didn't stop there. She hit the road with Brian McKnight, serenading audiences across the nation. Fast forward to 2010, and Sunshine was back with a bang. Announcing the release of her new single, Lie to Kick It on Twitter, she sent waves of excitement through her fans. Her third studio album, The Sun Shines Again, dropped on November 2, 2010, marking her triumphant return. With her soulful melodies and captivating lyrics, Sunshine proved that her light shines brighter than ever before. But you know life can be funny. It throws curveballs when you least expect it. Life took an unexpected turn, leading her down to the path of motherhood. In an interview, she spilled the beans, saying, Truth is, it's been a roller coaster ride. The music industry can be tough, like trying to swim upstream in a river of molasses. It's challenging when your passion is singing, but the powers that be make it feel like climbing Everest in flip-flops. Imagine pouring your heart and soul into your art, only to watch it gather dust on the shelf. That's been my reality more times than I'd care to count. These songs, these albums, they're my babies. But when they don't reach the ears they're meant for, it's like a piece of me goes unheard. You know, people don't, and this, this, it doesn't get to the people. You, know, you have a hard time with that. You know what right. I mean? And sometimes I fight with, um, you know, continuing to chase after an industry 
um, that hasn't been very nice to me, um, right. so to speak. So right. um, that's a challenge. It is a challenge. During one of those lulls between albums, she decided to pursue another passion. So, she packed her bags and headed to cosmetology school in Atlanta. Now, alongside chasing her musical dreams, she is a licensed cosmetologist. Talk about multitasking, right? It's all about diversifying your talents and keeping the dream alive, even when the odds are stacked against you. Right. Uh, I went to cosmetology school in Atlanta, got my license, you know, so uh, I multitask. Right. I'm, I'm a, a Jill of all trade. Sunshine's journey is a testament to the power of passion, perseverance, and the magic of music. So, next time you need a little pick-me-up, just remember, let Sunshine Anderson's melodies be your guiding light through even the darkest of days. Truth Hurts. Meet Sherry. Watson, also known as Truth Hurts, a talented American singer, songwriter, and actress born on October 10, 1971, in St. Louis, Missouri. Let's take a journey through her life and career, filled with highs, lows, and a lot of soulful music. Back in 2000, Watson landed a record deal with Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment label, a big step towards making her mark in the music industry. She made her debut as a backing vocalist on Busta Rhymes' hit single Break Your Neck in 2001, catching the attention of music lovers with her powerful voice. Soon after, Watson dipped her toes into acting, appearing in small roles in movies like The Wash, alongside Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, and a cameo in Ali starring Will Smith, but it was her musical prowess that truly shone through. She collaborated with renowned artists like Dr. Dre and Timbaland for her first solo album titled Truthfully Speaking, released in 2002 under Aftermath. The album's lead single, Addictive, featuring a verse from hip-hop legend Rakim, soared into the top 10 charts in the United States, cementing her place in the R&B scene. However, fame came with its own set of challenges. The song Addictive faced legal troubles due to its sampling of Lata Mangeshkar's Thoda Resham Lagta Hai. Despite the initial roadblocks and a hefty lawsuit, Truth Hurts persisted. Eventually, the legal battle settled, and the song became available on streaming platforms, proving that her music was meant to be heard. In the summer of 2002, Truth Hurts joined the Smoke and Grooves tour, sharing the stage with music icons like Lauryn Hill and Outkast. Yet, despite the buzz surrounding her, she struggled to replicate the success of Addictive. Her subsequent singles failed to make the same impact partly affected by controversies surrounding collaborators like R. Kelly. Nevertheless, Truth Hurts didn't let setbacks deter her. In 2004, she released her second album, Ready Now, under Raphael Sayadik's Pookie Entertainment label. Though the album didn't gain as much traction as her debut, it showcased her versatility and dedication to her craft. In the midst of her musical journey, Truth Hurts lent her vocals to various projects, including collaborations with artists like Jay Dilla. Despite facing challenges and setbacks, she continued to pursue her passion for music, releasing promotional singles and performing across Europe. Fast forward to today, and you'll find her not only making music, but also gracing our screens with her acting prowess. From Netflix hits to blockbuster films, she's everywhere, and she's not slowing down anytime soon. But her journey isn't just about fame and fortune, it's about the love for her craft and the joy of seeing her hard work pay off. Truth Hurts is a force to be reckoned with, leaving behind a legacy of unforgettable melodies and unwavering determination. From her chart-topping debut to her ongoing musical journey, she's proven herself as a force to be reckoned with in the R&B scene. Keep an eye out for what she has in store next, because when it comes to Truth Hurts, the music speaks for itself. The R&B stars of the 90s and early 2000s filled our lives with soulful tunes and unforgettable melodies. But as time passed, many of them faded into the background. Share your favorite memories and songs, keeping their legacy alive for generations to come. And that's all for today. Until next time, bye.